So uh, this lecture will be, uh, oh, sorry, the exam will have six different questions. Okay, so we will have a 20% question of uh, op amp, a 20% one AC question, 20% one power question, and then 20% two capacitor inductor questions, and then 20% you will have 20 questions. These are will be 20. So each one is 1%. So you have 20 questions total of multiple choice and straightforward calculations. Very simple circuits, very simple uh, capacitors, something that in one line you can find, you would find the answer. So that this is, will be the exam. So it's very similar to the midterm. You have five questions and you have one multiple question. Okay, so let's start now one by one let's start with the op amp now in the op amp it doesn't really matter you have one two three it doesn't really matter don't get scared if you see more op amps okay now once we understand how we'll approach the question it becomes couple of equations most of the time two equations will sufficient to solve any op amp question so what is the strategy a now a is find total number of nodes so the first thing that we need to identify the number of nodes so when you see here this is one i mean this is our ground so that's okay we don't need to count this because we don't apply KCL to the ground. The ground usually will be assigned clearly to you. So here the V is equal to zero, our reference. So that's okay. So here will be one node. So this connects to the ground. I don't need to count this. So this is number two. And this will be all of this will be node. Okay. Uh, move forward. This is number three. This is number four, and this is number five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and the ground. These are the number of nodes. So this is the first thing you need to find, identify the number of nodes. B, then once we know the number of nodes, each node, either you will give it a value, a voltage, or a symbol. So assign a value or variable to each node. It's very important to start like this so that things become very consistent. So let's see. Node 1 connected to a voltage source. So the, here the voltage is 5 volt. We, we assigned a value. This node, now in OPAM, as we know, there are two rules that you have to know. These are very important rules in the OPAMs. That V negative and V positive are equal. V negative is equal to the V positive. So the voltage at this node and this node are equal. And the current that enters I N equal to I P equal to zero. N stand for negative, P stand for positive. These are the two rules, the only two rules. Other than that, everything is KCL or nodal analysis. So here, this voltage is equal to this voltage because back to rule number one here, this connected directly to the ground. So this is zero volt here. So this is zero. Okay. So this is given to a, a value. Excellent. So we have here a value two. Number three. Now here, this is, I will call it V out one. V out one means this is the output voltage of the uh, first op amp. So this is not given, not known to us. So this is we will we will give it a, a value. Now this V out one, as a matter of fact, is the same as this voltage. This voltage and this voltage are exactly the same. So this is also called V out one. So this is one variable, okay? And here is your V out two, done. So now each node 
has either a value or as a variable. Okay, excellent. Now we will come to the KCL application. In KCL application, we have two simple rules. First one, do not apply KCL to a node that is either connected to voltage source or output of op amp. So these nodes, we don't apply KCL. Why is that? Because if you apply KCL here, for example, at node number one, which is connected to a voltage source, this KCL, I cannot apply KCL unless I assign a new current here. So I will be adding an equation with a new unknown. So I'm not doing anything. And instead of having two equations with two unknowns, I will have three equations with three unknowns. Okay, so adding an equation with an extra unknown to us, we don't want. Remember, in KCL or in node analysis, what we want is to find every single voltage in every single node. That's all we want to find. Once we know all the nodal voltages, then our problem is solved. Okay, so this node, we can't apply KCL to it. This node, it's neither an output nor connected to a supply. So yes, this we can apply. This node is an output we cannot apply. This node is not an output of an op amp. It's not connected to a supply. We can. This is an, an output of an op amp. So node one, node three, node five, we cannot apply KCL. Node two and four, we apply KCL. So you need two equations and you are done. That's it. This is the strategy. So here, for example, KCL to node number two. Again, like what we did before, we assume currents are leaving. So we have how many branches? We have one, two, three, and four. But this branch is the same as this branch where the current enter that node is equal to zero. So I don't need to count this. So I have three branches, then I have to have three items in my equation. So this current to the left will have, so KCL at two, zero minus five divided by 10K plus the current that goes in this branch is uh, zero minus V out one divided by four K plus zero minus V out two divided by, so this is 40 K, 80 K equal to zero. One equation, two unknowns, V out one and V out two. Then we have KCL to node, number number four so we have one two three again this is equal to zero so we have only two branches so the voltage here now here this is very important as i said this step is extremely important because if you don't realize that this and this are exactly the same voltage then you will add another unknown then you will get stuck. You have two equations and three unknowns. So you don't know what to do with it. Okay. So it's extremely important that before you do any KCL, do this step here. Assign a value or a variable and make sure that you apply the rules of the op amp when you do that. So current going down, V01 minus zero divided by 40K plus v01 minus v02 divided by 20k equal to zero second equation so two equations to unknown i'm done i will find v01 v02 remember in node analysis we want to find every single node voltages once i know this i'm done i know every single node voltages all the five nodes i will know their values now what is the question was the question was find v out that is the question now, can someone tell me what is this V out?
What is V out equal to what? Exactly, V out is V0, not V02. No. What is V out? V01. Yes, thanks, uh, Carter. It is V01. Why is that? Because what is V out? V out is the voltage between this point and the ground. And between this point and the ground, it is V01, not V02. V02 is between this point and the ground. So it's the voltage between this and this. So it is the voltage drop here and there. Okay. So this would be equal to V01. Your problem is solved. So this is the answer. Please try this question. And this is considered this is and was one of the practice. That is the level of the difficulty you are looking into in the in the exam. Now, if we add three, four of amps, it doesn't matter. Okay. Regardless of the number of, of amps, what you need, just apply these simple rules, approach it with this strategy, then you should have no problem at all with the op amp. Now, let's see if you have any question here in the op amp. Anything about the op amp you want to ask about, please, you can ask me now. You can write down there on the chat if you want. If nothing, then I will proceed with the, with the second question, which is the the AC, the AC question. Voltage gain. Okay, what is the voltage gain? Voltage gain is nothing but V out over Vn. That's that's all. Okay. So basically, here, if I ask for a voltage gain, it would you will not get a value here. You will not get get a value of uh, this. This will becomes Vn. Okay, so uh, the voltage gain will be a V out over Vn. So it's a ratio. Okay, so you just get the ratio. That's all. And we will tell you exactly what is the, 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 the gain will be. So v, which V out? Where is the V out and where is the Vn? Why KCL at node 4 has two terms? Because we have... We have only one, two, three branches there. This branch, the current is equal to zero. The current that enters the op amp, the positive terminal is equal to zero. So basically have one and two. This is why we have only two, two terms. Hopefully that's Alexa, uh, explain your question. For differential and instrumentation amplifier, you might have them in the multiple choice question, but you will not have them in the in this main question. Uh, can you explain why V is the same at node three at node four? Because back to the op amp principle, op amp principle says that these two voltages are the same. The V n connected to the negative terminal and the VB connected to the positive terminal, they are equal. So this is what is connected to the negative and this is what connected to the positive. So this voltage and this voltage are equal. Same like this voltage and this voltage are equal. Now this voltage is zero, so this is equal to zero. So these two voltages are equal and these two voltages are equal. Okay. I hope that explains everything in the op amp. Let's move on to the second question, which is the AC question. Now, in the AC question, you could have two different, uh, I would say, forms of the question. Either the question, I will call it a row question or a question in the final form. So it's either this or like this. What's the difference between this and that? Here, the questions are given you in the time domain. So you have to do pre-processing before you start solving the question. So how we do the pre-processing? This cosine, so this is 10 angle 120. So we change the cosine into a polar format. This is equal to five angle of 30. And then we change the capacitor to minus J over omega C and the inductor to J omega L. And the omega itself is equal to from the supply. Every circuit will have only one omega is equal to 1000 radian per second. So you have to change everything like this. And then you are set. 
if you notice this question, this question is ready. You don't need to do any processing. The voltages are given in polar. The capacitor is the minus J and the inductor is the, the J. So either this or that, then if the question is given like this, now we can move to the second step. If the question is equal like this, then we have to do pre-process. Now, after that, we see what is the question here. In this is find I, Y. I want to find this curve. Okay. I am a big fan of nodal analysis. Okay. I like nodal. Uh, I think nodal is one of very efficient techniques. So I would use nodal here. Now, when you look to this question, of course, you can apply KCL and KVL. It's up to you. Okay. And let's see if we apply KCL and KVL, how many equations you will end up. And if I apply nodal, how many equations will end up. So let's see here. So we'll start with the classical, I would call classical approach, which is KCL and KVL. So KCL, KVL approach. So in KCL and KVL approach, we have the equations in terms of the currents. So here I will have a current, I will call this is like I1, this is IY, I will leave it, and this is I2. So we have how many variables? One, two, and three. Okay. So we will have here uh KCL, so I1 is equal to I2 plus IY. However, you can see here that is I1 is the same as this current. So I1 is basically is equal to five angle of 30. So I1 is known. Still we have two unknowns. Then I have to uh, apply KVL. Now we cannot apply KVL to a current source. Why is that? Because we don't know the voltage here then I will have to call this is uh, another variable. Then if I add another variable, then I'm adding another, I mean, equation. So that's not really what I'm intending to have. Okay. So we have this right loop we can apply. So the currents like this plus minus plus minus. So we'll have here uh, KVL. Then we will have J omega L. J omega L times I2 plus 10 angle of 120 minus IY because IY is going, we are negative, times minus J over omega C and minus IY times 1 ohm equal to zero. Now we know L, we know omega, we know C, we have everything. Then we solve this to get your I1. Now, if you do nodal analysis, then again, how many nodes we have? One, two, three, four. This node is my reference. Don't touch it. Okay. And this node is co connected to a current source. Okay. We can use it, but there is no point to call add another unknown here. Uh, this node is known to us. This is 10 angle 120 because a voltage source. So basically, if I if I apply KCL, KCL at Vx, we'll have only one equation because assuming the currents are leaving, so Vx uh, minus zero divided by one minus J over omega C, the current go down, plus to the right, Vx minus 10 angle 120, divided by j omega l and the current that here this is entered i cannot touch it because this current source is equal to five angle of 30 because there's a current that enters here so these two currents are leaving equal to the current that enter that's it we'll find vx once i know vx iy is nothing but your iy is equal to vx divided by one minus j over omega c my problem is done relatively that's nodal is a bit easier in some other application it's even much easier if we have here a voltage source for instance if that was a voltage source not a current source again you need only one equation here but you will have more equations you will have to have three simultaneous equations in complex format so generally speaking the general rule is that use uh, try to use nodal if you can but still you can you can use uh, kcl cable and you will be able to solve it now in this question again 
it is uh, the difference here. The question is ready. And we have a dependent source. So I thought to bring this up here to remind you what is a dependent source. This is a current dependent current source. Okay. Now, again, how many nodes we have? We have node number one. We have node number two. And we have node number number three. Okay. This is equal to zero. So I don't need to apply KCL here. This V1 basically is equal to 10 angle of 30. So it's done. So the only node I can here have apply KCL at V2. Assuming the currents are leaving. So the current to the left is V2 minus V1 divided by minus J2 plus the current that goes down V2 minus 0 divided by J1. And this current is leaving plus 2IX equal to 0. Now, V1 is known. V2, this is what I want to calculate. So this is my unknown. And I need to find IX with this another unknown. Now, what is IX? We have to look into the circuit. Where is this variable? Okay, so my IX is here. Your IX is equal to V1 divided by 4. So we're having these two equations. You can just substitute here the value here of, uh, of IX and substitute V1. You have one equation, one unknown, then you can, you can solve it. Okay, so in, in, in AC analysis, it's very straightforward. It's very similar to the circuit questions. However, the only thing that you have to pay attention here is, as, as I mentioned, the math. You are dealing with rectangular, you are dealing with polar. Many times you need to convert from one format to another. Depends what is the mathematical operation at hand that you are doing right now. That's you need to pay attention to. Okay, so I think this is very straightforward. Any questions here? Any question about AC? Can you go back, please? Of course, I can go back. Here. Carter, you want to go? OK. You, you want to have a question or you just want to, you want to take notes? Oh, KCL at VX. Okay, KCL at VX. Okay, summation of currents equal to zero. So I1 enters, IY leaving, I2 leaving. These currents, if it's a current source, you, you have no control over it. If it is uh, another thing, something you assign, then you can choose the direction. Now, current enters equal to current leaving. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I1. But what is I1? The current that goes here, which is basically, this is a current source here connected to the same branch. So this I1 is the same as this current. So this I is I1. If you confused, apply KCL to this node. This current enter, this current leave. So 5 angle of 30 is equal to I1. Okay? Hopefully that's clarified. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, let, let's go for the power calculations. Here is the question for the power. And I think Uthman, uh, our TA, gave you a, a lecture on uh, how to, uh, about power calculations. Now, in the power calculations, it's a, it's a, you need, to, it is a mix between AC analysis and power analysis. Okay. So we will need to borrow some information from the power. Uh, information that we have in the circuit but at the end of the day you will have an AC analysis question, but with power focus now the key equation that we want to use here and you have to use it is that P is equal to V I cosine theta V minus theta I so that is the key equation now here if it's not given to you, we assume everything is in RMS, not peak value. So there is no half. Everything is in RMS. Okay. So th this is a very important equation. Now, I could give you the information at the end side, or we call it at the load side, or I can give you the same information at the source side. It doesn't matter. 
it could be you know how much power how much power factor which is uh, this actually this is the cosine theta this is what we call the power factor okay i could give it to you at the load at at the load of the source so when you see such a question your first task would be find if it's not given i and i remember is a vector so it has a magnitude and it has an angle so your i here as a magnitude is equal to p divided by v power factor so you could calculate i from the source side or i from the load side and it's the same because you have only one loop so that's the same current so depends on what information i give to you so in this question here we know that p 20 times 10 to power 3 divided by the voltage which is 220 and the power factor is 0.8 so the current is 114 amp this is the magnitude you need to find the angle Okay, now we know that the power factor, which is cosine theta V minus theta I is equal to 0.8. So we will take cosine inverse of both sides. So here, if you take cosine inverse of this, this becomes theta V minus theta I is equal to cosine inverse of 0.8, which is equal to 36.9. Now, theta V is the angle of the voltage, which is zero. So from this, you can say that theta I is equal to minus 36.9. Once you know the current angle, then your I is equal to 114 angle of minus 36.9. As I said, this could be from the source side or the load side. Once you know the current, you are done. Your problem is practically solved. Now, what do we, I want to find? Okay, I want to find Vs, okay, KVL. We will have here your I. We know the voltage here, so it's okay. So your Vs is equal to your I times 0 0.01 plus J.05 plus 220 angular. Now this becomes, now what? This is KVL, this comes from KVL. This becomes an AC question so the i i know it substitute here you multiply polar with rectangular we know that we will convert the rectangle to polar then we will uh, find the value then we have to add two polars when we cannot do that then we have to convert them into rectangular add them and then convert them back to uh, to uh, polar excellent if it says here the power factor at vs so the current is the same now, the Vs, this is the value of Vs. When you do the calculation, this is your Vs. will be like this. Okay. So, what is the power factor at the source? Again, it is cosine theta V minus theta I. Now, theta V is 1. Here, theta V is 0. So, this becomes cosine of 1 minus minus 36.9. Nine, and then we can find the power factor and you have to specify it is lagging why lagging because the current angle is lower than the voltage and in practical power systems lagging power factor is the norm in very few cases we have a leading power factor but that's not in the scope of this of this course line losses okay now you can find line losses in two different ways you can find the power at the supply which is v i cosine theta we know v at the source i is the same and then we have the power factor at the source here this is the power factor at the so we know everything so i know power consumed 20 kilowatt at the load i know the power here has certain value at the source the line losses is the difference you just subtract how much I produced and minus how much I consumed at the load. The difference is how much I lost during the transmission of the power from the source to the load. Another way of doing this 
the P loss is equal to I square times R. I square is the magnitude of R. And here you have to be careful. You have to take the polar magnitude, not the rectangular, because this will be equal to A plus JB. You can't take this value. You have to take the total current. Because you remember, this current is nothing but A squared plus B squared when we convert from rectangular to polar. So the current that you use in this formula is the polar current, which we calculate, which is the 114, times the resistance. And we do not consider this because we said that, that the inductor consume zero power, doesn't consume any power, as if it doesn't exist when it comes to the power current. So that, that's basically what you will be asked for the power question. As I said, you might be given information at the sending side, at the receiving side, but you will not be giving some of the information. For example, I give you the power here and the power factor there. Then you cannot solve the question using circuit analysis. Then you have to use some iterative techniques. We teach these things in uh, advanced power courses for electric engineering so, so either you will have the power power factor the voltage and one side at the load or at the end side so usually you have these three information and we need to find the fourth fourth one okay that's this is the power so you have my questions you have uh, what uh Othman gave you so that's i think a very very good uh practice uh, problems now this is the first time I introduced power calculations in the course. So I will, I posted one final and I will post another final, uh, hopefully to, to tonight. You will see questions about every, almost everything except about the power calculations. Yes, yes. Uh, if the lagging, if the current with this is lower than the voltage okay usually the voltage we take it as zero for reference so the current angle will be will be negative if the current is positive then it will be leading power okay excellent any other questions about power calculations okay excellent let's move on now, for the capacitor, you will have two tiny questions. One question will be most likely will be about uh, energy stored. How to find the energy stored in a capacitor and inductor? Okay, so basically, this is a DC question. If it's a DC question, rule number one, capacitor C will be changing to open circuit, inductor, L will be changed to short circuit. So that's the first thing. Second, the energy in the capacitor is equal to one half CV squared. The energy in the inductor is equal to one half LI squared. Now the C and the L are always given. So your task is to find the voltage in the open circuit of the inductor and the current in the share, sorry, in the capacitor, and I is the current in the short circuit. So here you come. And usually when you do that, the circuit becomes much simpler. So this becomes a short circuit. This becomes 4 ohm. This is an open circuit. So this is your VC that you are interested to find. This is 4. And here, this is 3. This is 6. And this is short circuit. And here it is the, the inductor. Now, I want to find I L which is here, and VC, which is here. You see here, the question becomes extremely easy because IL basically is equal to minus 6 amps. Very straightforward. If you have like KCL here, this current enter, this current enter, so IL is equal to minus 6 amps. So <coughs> for the energy, because of the square, it doesn't really matter the sign. So you know L, one half LI squared. Done. How about this? The capacitor is this voltage, okay? We apply KVL here to this loop. This is 12 volt. Now, what is the current here? It's zero. I equal to zero because this is an open circuit. So the voltage drop here is equal to zero. So it's VC minus 12 is equal to zero. So your VC is basically equal to 12 volt. As simple as that. Just KVL here. 
Okay, so this voltage, zero times four plus VC minus 12 is equal to zero. Done. Then one half CV squared, and you have here the, the, the numbers. Uh, now, if you want to find the current, the energy stored here, you have here, if, if this is IL2, we have IL1, so you need to find the uh, current here. Again, it becomes very straightforward because this current is the same as this current. So this is here your IL1. You know uh, this current, you can find this current, then you apply KCL. You can, any technique, then you can find IL1. I will leave this for you to practice. Okay, let's see if you have any other questions here. Can we also say that VC is 12 since it is in par Yes, it is actually in parallel. Now in parallel for one reason, because there is no voltage drop here. This voltage drop is equal to zero. So basically this node is the same as this node. Good, there is nothing here. There is no voltage drop here. Okay. Now, let's see if we have any other questions. It says here, is the current in the three uh, Henry six amps minus six amps with that direction? So it doesn't really matter because it's because of the one half Li squared. Uh, is the current zero at the four ohm? Yes, it is zero because of the open circuit. Yes, because of the open circuit. Because we have an open circuit here, there is no current. Remember, current cannot go in open circuit. So the current here, this open circuit will force the current to become equal to equal to zero. So you'll see here that the, 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 this type of questions, once you, you simplify it, then it becomes very, very easy question, very simple circuit. Uh, and it is also all DC. Why is the voltage across, uh, let's see here, why the voltage across the four ohm resistor is zero? Because the current is zero, remember ohm's law. The voltage across this is equal to IR. R is four, but the current that enters the branch is equal to zero. Why? Because of the open circuit. So the voltage will equal to zero. That's why the voltage across the four ohm is equal to equal to zero. Uh, then you will most likely you will have a question like this, which is you have some graph, then you will be asked to find the current in the capacitor or the voltage in the capacitor or the same thing for the inductor. Now we have two relationships, basically. We have I is equal to C, D, V, C, D, T. This is in the capacitor. Or V, C is equal to 1 over C integration of I, C, D, T plus V of 0. This is for the capacitor. For the inductor, we have VL equal to L D I L Y D T, or you will have I L is equal to one over L integration of V L D T plus I of or I L F of zero V C of zero. That's so you need to first decide one of these four equations that you will be using. Second, here say for example the voltage across. So we are given a voltage across a capacitor, and we want to find the current. So this is our our equation. That's it. You'll use only one equation. You don't use to use more. Okay, so you need to do a derivative here. So basically, you need to find the slope here. Okay, and you multiply it by C D V C by D T. How to find the slope? It's very straightforward, of course, guys. This is a bit math now, but if you see here, you're uh, let's say from zero to twenty millisecond, you will have here the your uh, voltage VC will equal to the slope is uh, ten divided ten minus zero divided by twenty times ten to minus three minus zero. So this becomes uh, point. Uh, 5 times 10 to power 3 or 500 volt okay this is the slope so and you will have here t your variable 500 t now we'll take the derivative of this so dvc by dt will equal to 500 multiply this with the c here multiply it here so your i c is equal to 12 times 10 to minus 6 
times, let's say 0. 0.5 times 10 to the power 3. Okay, so 0. 0.5 times, this is 6, this is times 10 to minus 3, or this is 6 milliamps. So if you want to draw it, if you ask to draw it, very straightforward. From 0 to 20, what you will have, you have 6 milliamps, 6 milliamps. And then you will see from, now you don't need to find the exact, because remember, now when the line doesn't cross the origin, the equation becomes equal to your V is equal to the slope times T plus B. I don't need to find B at all. Why? Because I'm taking the derivative here, dV by dt. So this will go to zero. So regardless what is the value, you don't need to waste your time to find this. What you need to find is only the slope. So you'll find the slope here, which is the negative of the previous one. So that you will have minus six milliamps actually. So we'll have here six amps and here you have six minus six milliamps. And that's it. So we have some questions about either so and we have some good examples in the notes and the slides in the practice problems so then you can go and check so this would be like worth 10 percent and this will worth also 10 percent okay so that's an overall uh pictures of the final this is what you expect to see now again we randomize the questions uh, each question will have different questions and each question we randomize the variables as well. So, but of course we can't guarantee that all the questions will have exactly the same difficulty. This is something very random. Some questions are a bit harder than others. We are hoping that, okay, you will get maybe harder questions in part A or in the first question, easier questions in part two. I mean, if you are really, really unlucky, you will get the hardest one in everything. But this is, again, not intentional, and this is completely random. That's This is the only thing I can tell you about the, how we randomize the, the questions. Uh, that's from me. That's all from, from my side. Uh, let me just here... Uh, close the and I will be posting this so I will stop the recording